Alright, g'day guys, welcome to a very special edition of the True Footy Power Ranking series that I've been doing every five rounds, except this time it's only three weeks after the last one, because it's the finals, baby. Today we're going to be ranking all eight finalists in the order, uh, I guess it's a power rankings in terms of form, but also sort of the order we sort of rank them in terms of likelihood to win the flag as well. Mm. So I've recruited young Druzy of the I'm Druzy here. Footy Channel, yes. We just recorded Just the Tips this week, and we've done the Druzy, uh, Drew Footy Show as well, so go check that out. Um, but today we're going to crack straight into the rankings, because we don't have a lot of time, and we're going to start from the eighth team most likely to win the flag. Mm -hmm. Drew, we've come up with a consensus as well. This is the team that, well, this is the order that we agreed upon. So there was a little bit of a negotiation, a debate, and we've sort of come up with what we think uh, the rankings should look like. So, Frio top, yeah. Lesko second. Yeah. So we'll start off with the eighth most likely side to win the flag. Mm -hmm. And we agreed that it was Essendon. Yes. Okay, so their last three has been uh, pretty good. They've just beaten the Dogs, Suns, and Pies. Mm -hmm. um, but they're record against the top eight which is quite critical to in this analysis is uh the worst of any top eight side uh, yeah. top eight side which you'd expect for the team that came eight uh having beaten only one top eight side this year but it's the bulldogs happens to be the bulldogs which is the kind of out um the, the kind of variable here which is interesting they yeah. actually progress quite easily um they do have a strong midfield they've kind of had a key forward target in peter wright sort of emerge in the last three weeks yeah. as well um and you know with merritt and parish as well they're going to be a tough midfield for anyone to to break down especially the bulldogs midfield which is out of form not specifically talking about how they're going to go in week one but how likely they are to win the flag we think we agree there's some x factor in that team mm -hmm. that jake stringer and tipping woody uh, in particular in mm -hmm. that forward line um good talls and smalls are important for finals yeah it's been 6,203 days since they won a final. But, um, That's a lot. Yeah, so why, why do you think Essendon are the eighth side? I think they've had a lot of players this year who have stood up and sort of hit their prime this year, but have been consistent all year with that as well. I'm talking about guys like Darcy Parrish, uh, obviously, uh, Merritt as well. Uh, but Stringer's usually good in bunches. Like, he'll be good here, good there. But he's been, he's been very solid this season, young Jakey boy. And uh, yeah, they finally found that mid to forward connection, which makes them available to put a lot of score on the scoreboard. So mm. I think they're uh, the, the eighth best side in the competition at the moment. Yeah, it's strange where they could still win a final quite mm. conceivably, but uh, I don't see them getting past week two with no. the quality of that top six. No. Um, and we have rated them below GWS, who we now have in seventh position. Um, and uh, I guess part of that is the fact that GWS beat Essendon uh, not too long yeah. ago, um, which kind of lifts them up a little bit. And also that finals experience I think the Giants mm -hmm. have. Uh, Essendon would be one of the... Uh, maybe not the youngest. There's also Sydney in terms of finals experience, yeah. but Essendon do have... A, a lot of players that haven't really certainly not gone deep into finals they've mm -hmm. ever, never uh, barely won a final who's finals I don't know what that means sex show we will talk about the Giants now uh, their record against the top 8 is 5-5 five and five, which means I think they've played the most games against the <laughs> top 8 there's 10 teams in the top 8 5-5 yeah, five and five. yeah it, it is weird though um, <laughs> yeah. that the fixtures obviously set up so that um, the bottom teams play the easier sides more yeah. um, but it doesn't work that way because the top 8 changes every year mm -hmm. so it's not always going to be perfect so GWS um, by that logic have had a harder fixture than you'd think um, but they have the third best record against the top 8 out of any of these finals mm -hmm. which is interesting uh, with 5 wins so they've beat Melbourne as we remember in yeah. uh, the MCG they beat the Swans in a derby and they beat the Cats at GMHBA most recently and I think it's their, their form lately as well um, yeah. which has really elevated them certainly above Essendon in the way we see it the last three were against Geelong Richmond and Carlton and they, they won all three what can win it for them I think the star power is unquestionable mm -hmm. Toby Green in particular Whitfield Toronto Josh Kelly it's a star started team arguably underachieved this year in terms yeah. of wins and losses uh, they were a fair bit behind the pack and that's why we rated them 7th uh, but they do have that finals experience and you know some of these players or a lot of them would have played it in a grand final as well how deep do you think they could possibly get balls no. Yeah, I think they'll probably they could potentially win this week and then do the old slip out in the in the semi. <laughs> yeah, their defensive unit worked very well as a group, not only from the back half but also set, setting up outside of the defensive uh, fifty to get repeat entries as well. Their distribution from the back half is very good, and Callum Ward is having a very good end of the season as well. To add to those guys that you just mentioned, um, they've beaten Sydney earlier in the season. They can do it again this week. Mm. But if, if they do beat Sydney, how realistic do you think they could go to a premium yeah. or further? I don't think they'll go all the way this mm. season. I think they're a better side in 2019. 20, yeah. Yeah. 
So in 2019, they were in a similar position. They finished sixth uh, and yeah. had to win three upset finals. So they're setting themselves up to do or have to do that again. Mm-hmm. I think in the 2019 home and away season, they were a better team. I think, yeah. I think they sort of fell away at the end of that the year from memory. Um, I remember them having some really good wins. They beat Geelong at GMHBA. <laughs> Familiar. Um, but uh, ultimately, I think they're not quite on that level. They could upset a team. I reckon yeah. a prelim would be the craziest scenario, to be honest. Uh, but then again, we never would have said that in 2019 either. So I think conceivably 7th and 8th, GWS and Essendon. Yeah. Clearly be- uh, not as good as the other top six. Yeah, I think it's just the consistency that has on this low, because obviously they've proven that they can mm. compete with the top sides. So uh, yeah, just the consistency. But the fact that they've beaten two top four sides... Mm. Could be uh could, could be, be a nice. sneaky sneaky wiggle into a prelim, maybe even a grand final, but I doubt it. So we'll go with our sixth ranked side, uh, and this is where the glut becomes a little bit harder to separate. Mm. Uh, I certainly felt that way. Uh, we're going with the Sydney Swans, whose record against the top eight is six and three. So they played nine games against the top eight, and that's the second best record of any team in the top eight uh, against the other top eight. So again, mm. that really bodes well for a team hoping to um, from outside the top four shake things up a bit and beat some teams that are um, considered better than them. Yeah, their last. Three, uh, they've had a loss to the Saints and then wins over North and the Sun. So not the most difficult run into the finals um, and still put together a 15-7 and seven season. So uh, I think I made this point on one of our videos recently. 15-7 and seven has won the flag in 16 and 17 as mm-hmm. well. So that is a record of a team that can mix it with the best. And I think the, the wins this year they've had uh, over Geelong... Um, and Brisbane in particular early mm-hmm. in the season show that they're while they're a young side when they're red hot they're actually really really hard to stop there's also the Buddy Franklin uh, factor do you think he's on 992 goals do you think he gets to 1000 this final series if he plays two games he will I reckon yeah yeah, yeah. I think that it's quite conceivable that they'll play two games. I could see him kicking like seven and ending yeah. up with one left. And But anyway, we're not here to talk about Buddy Franklin. They've also got some other star power. Yeah, their experienced players like Heaney is a massive X-Factor player. Luke mm-hmm. Parker's been really good this year. Um, and like I said, their, their form when they're on is really, really good. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's close between them and the Bulldogs? Considering they also did beat the Bulldogs recently. I reckon Sydney could go all the way. I think any of the top six sides mm-hmm. could go all the way this year. Sydney have... Yeah, they can really put it on sides. We saw that against the Suns. We saw it against West Coast. Uh, we saw it against GWS in that second derby as well in that second half. Once they get going, they are a well-oiled machine. They're the best pressure side in the competition as well. So um, they are going to be a very hard team to beat in finals. No one's going to walk over Sydney easily. Whatever side they come up against, it'll be a good challenge. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think Sydney are about as good as a... They're probably top four worthy, I think. They had a bit of a lame patch in the middle of the season where they lost to shit sides like Frio and uh, <laughs> and, and Gold Coast. But other than that, they've been consistent all year. They could end up, because of the nature of this final series as well, it's worth noting that some teams just can't have home finals. Sydney's one of them, but it also means they might not have uh, away finals in week two. So if they yeah. win this game, Geelong lose week one. They play Geelong on a neutral venue as opposed to playing them at uh, a Port Adelaide in Adelaide. So if things go their way, they could actually you know have a bit of fortune in terms of the fixture. But the flip side of that is they also haven't been home for months. Mm. Um, Richmond and Geelong were the grand finals last year in the exact same scenario. Obviously Melbourne was uh, locked down, but uh, Sydney have their own adversity. And you you might see remember that guy when they won the last derby as well. John Longmire was emotional at the end yeah. of the game, so it might have bonded them and might put them in a really good position to, to shake things up. Um, but we'll talk about the Bulldogs now, who are a fifth best side, because they've fallen away badly, and I think I think in my last power rankings, I had them first or second, and that really yeah. tells the tale of, uh, of their last three weeks. They've lost to um, the Dons, the Hawks, and the Power in three pretty meek offerings. You watched the uh, Power game, you weren't impressed? Yeah, no, they, they just look disjointed. I've said that <laughs> for sides that just don't have a good mid-to-forward connection this year, but um, I think Josh Bruce has just removed not just the forward threat, but the threat that they have around the ground in ruck contests because Tim English has gone forward for some reason. That doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, Beveridge, have you seen his press conferences? And he just gives like whack answers. Yeah, I'm not a fan of his demeanor, yeah. to be honest. I respect him as a coach, yeah. but I've, he's annoyed me at times. Um, yeah, exactly. He's a, he's a bit of a weirdo. And I think putting <laughs> Mitch Hannon in the ruck over Tim English, who you drafted as a ruckman, mm. I don't know, maybe some screws loose up there. <laughs> um, uh, but to be fair, they have played some uh, three good informed sides in the last three weeks. Hawthorne had a great ending to the season. Port Adelaide have won uh, nine out of their last ten. And Essendon won their last three of the season as well to make the top eight. So uh, they've come up against hungry sides. And the Bulldogs haven't been hungry. Uh, they've, uh, yeah, it looks quite flat. Can't play four quarters at the moment. Their midfield isn't really clicking as a as a unit. They haven't really had that outside run which they've had all season. So yeah, no, they've uh, they've dropped 
for sure. If record against the top eight is the fifth best of any side, and that's where we ranked them, mm-hmm. um, they've had four wins and five losses. Uh, but I think the reason we've edged Sydney, despite you know the talk about Sydney was all very promising there, and then with the dogs, it's all doom and gloom. But I think the best Bulldogs that we've seen this year has earned the right to be higher than Sydney. And yeah. I, I think... There's a bit of a misdiagnosis. People talking about Josh Bruce going out and their form dipping, but I think it's unrelated. It, it could compound that, but mm-hmm. I, I think they're just flat at the moment. And when Bont's not playing well, um, the rest of the team obviously isn't really lifting to the standard to, that's required to sort of make up for that. Yeah. But he is, in my opinion, the biggest star in the game. Mm-hmm. And in the finals, I can see him lifting and tearing teams a new one. And I, th- I think they can definitely win it from fifth. Yeah. Like, I'm not um, one of those people that thinks the dogs are done. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it would be a huge disappointment if they go out in week one. Um, I don't I think they will. They can they can mix it with the best. Um, the sky's not falling at all, and on their day, I think they can win the flag. Do you still believe they can win the flag? Yeah, I reckon. Final kind of pressured you into that. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. I was just having to think. Final series, it's a it's a different kettle of fish. Mm. So, uh, yeah, they've beaten Melbourne this year. Mm-hmm. Okay, which helps with they're going to play one of those teams in the final. They've also beaten Port in Adelaide and Brisbane. Uh, yes, in that's Ballarat. right, in Ballarat, yes. But I think the the fact they've won in Adelaide, where they could quite realistically be playing at mm-hmm. some point, potentially even the grand final, yeah. uh, that's a plus for them. So I still, yeah, I think we agree the Bulldogs still slightly higher than Sydney. Mm-hmm. The fourth best team in the comp at the moment, in our ratings, and I think it's really tight between the top four, mm. uh, we, we struggle with this, is Port Adelaide, um, a team that is four and four against the top eight, despite... Uh, yeah, because, because of, it. <laughs> yeah, well they've copped it because I think the dynamic, the 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 makeup of that top eight has changed as well. Yeah. So at one point they'd only beaten one team, but then Essendon slides in, they and slip. GWS slide yeah, in, yeah. exactly. West Coast slide out. So um, yeah, that that kind of changes things a little bit. And uh, but they're still their record against the top eight is the seventh best, uh, only better than Essendon out of this group. They've won the last three over the Crows, uh, the Blues, and the Dogs. Um, and I think the win over the Dogs, um, despite it maybe not being the most eye-catching performance, it still earned a little bit of respect. This team mm. is good enough to beat teams if they're off off the boil. But their record against Geelong earlier this year and losses to uh, Brisbane and Melbourne is the concern because uh, two of those games were at home as yeah. well. How deep do you think they can go? Uh, they have what it takes if they can play their best footy to, to win a prelim, I believe. I don't think they're the best side in the competition. I don't think they'll win the grand final, but anything can happen in September. They didn't look too good in the showdown. They narrowly scraped a win against like the, mm-hmm. the bottom four side, the Crows, or bottom five, wherever they finish. I don't know. No, uh, four, yeah. The Blues, they beat. Most teams do. And then the Dogs, it, they were like so off. I went into the Pairs stream and I was like, is this a frustrating game for you? He's like, I am so annoyed at how this game has gone. Just the skill execution mm. was sort of off. And yeah, I think they're ranked fourth in this power ranking because they just haven't beaten the top sides at home this season. Mm. Melbourne outclassed them, Geelong outclassed them, the Bulldogs outclassed them at home as well. So uh, whilst they have been their form side in the comp, uh, they have always just been a, a bully basher. <laughs> no, I know not a bully basher. They are the bullies flat bashing the nerds. Yeah, yeah the track. nerds. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's why they are fourth for me. Well, yeah, I think the fact that they beat the dogs in the final round, they deservedly go ahead of them yeah. in the rankings. That's pretty much our rationale for that. And the fact that they've got two guaranteed home finals mm-hmm. in uh, you know a final series where, as we've said, not everyone's guaranteed a home final at all. Even if uh, we finish top like Melbourne, they're not going to have any home finals this mm-hmm. year. So that and they're a finals experienced team. They've got X Factor coming out the wazoo. Young talent, uh, Boak, Wines, Gray. These guys, or um, well, particularly Boak and Gray, at the end of their careers, haven't mm-hmm. won a flag. Yeah. Might throw everything. I, I think the home crowd in some of these finals will give them a bit of a sniff. So, yeah. um, But we agree, probably just behind the best of the rest. In third spot, we have got Geelong, who another team like the Bulldogs have put in a pretty underwhelming final three weeks of the mm-hmm. season, despite you know not long ago being talked about as the clear premiership favourite. Now we've got them third, yeah. uh, largely due to... Um, well, last week, I think when you lose to the one of the other major contenders at home, when you're 44 points up, it's hard to make a case that you deserve to be ranked higher in the premiership stakes. Um, their record against the top eight is the sixth best of any top eight side. So that does actually paint a story that they're yeah. not quite as dominant as we thought they were. Um, they've lost two of their last three, all three of those games were at G- uh, GMHBA and they kind of just got over the line against St Kilda who haven't been playing amazing footy either they're 0-2 against Melbourne this year they're 0-1 against Brisbane who are the other two major threats um, other than Port although they did beat Port in, mm-hmm. in Adelaide which is actually quite compelling yeah. what can win it for them their star power they've got Jeremy Cameron they didn't have last year and he's just another tough man to stop mm-hmm. but then Tom Stewart goes out of the side he's confirmed out for the rest of the year so there's a little bit of, um, of a downside in that respect the interesting thing here for me 
will be where they play their home finals mm. because at the moment they're playing week one away do they play in Adelaide but last year they were undefeated at the Gabba other than the grand final so it's going to be interesting to see what they do there what do you make of the Cats? I think uh, when they are on there is not many sides in the comp better than them I think they can get goals quicker than any side uh, but yeah very lame end of the season they just scraped past St Kilda uh, lost to GWS and then yeah lo- losing that last game when they had such a 45 such a big 45 point lead um, just shows that they sort of switched off which you can't do against good sides in the finals I think they'll be up for it and I think they will switch on for the game against Port Adelaide this week um, but yeah Jeremy Cameron he's going to be the X factor in this side because he yeah he's one of those players that can just kick goals so quickly uh, once they just start getting entries on entries on entries they have some of the best forwards in the comps uh, to, to deliver on the midfield craft which is also a leak as well mm. what holds Geelong back is uh, we'll get to teams like Melbourne in, uh, in a moment but when the heat and the pressure goes up in a game I think Geelong have failed to really raise their to that standard they, yeah. they're good when they're controlling the game uh, they're hard to overcome but when you put the heat on them against Melbourne they fell away against Hawthorne earlier this year they struggled to really kill them but when, they're, when they've got the control of the game, like against West Coast and other teams they've batted mm. this year, um, they just keep coasting. So Well, that game against Port Adelaide, the Heat game, and they, they turned it up. And that's, that's what they've got this week. That's true. But the record against that top eight, as yeah. I said, not as compelling as that's the That's probably the best stat out of all of these, hey? Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. But we'll move up to the Brisbane Lions, who we now have second on the basis of their recent form. We um, were, uh, you did have Geelong second, and I was like, wait a minute. Brisbane are in good form, and they've beaten Geelong. Let's yeah. whip those around. Yeah, and they Brisbane also get home finals as well, which yeah. is a factor in this. Their record against the top eight is the fourth best of any side, uh, with four wins and four losses, and their last three have been pretty compelling wins, pretty big wins over the Eagles, Pies, and Crows. They've beaten Geelong and Port this year, which goes in their favour, uh, and like I said, the home final factor, um, provided they qualify, or well, they will qualify for at least one, um, maybe week two or week three, uh, that's a factor as well. The, this will be their first away final with this group which is a fact so they, they've, mm. they've played in finals now they've got a young side that's got a bit of final yeah, experience they've all been at home they've all they? been at home and they've only won one of them and I, I can overlook that because they're a young side but the, the away final will be a different test for them uh, when I say away it is still neutral but yeah. it's not quite the same as playing at a, a packed out Gabba as well Yeah. Um, this could be a case for Brisbane a bit like Port in 2004. This is a bit before your time, but Port Adelaide finished top of the ladder and then Brisbane won the flag in 02 and 03. Mm-hmm. Then in 04, Port Adelaide finished top of the ladder again and people are like, oh, they haven't really passed that final test. This could be the year Brisbane do it. Yeah. So I, I could make that case for them. And they've got stars like Danaher, Cameron, Neil, Zorko, um, and that's just scratching the surface yeah. of what they've uh, of what they've got. Uh, how far do you think Brisbane are likely to go? I can see them winning it the grand final yeah. this year to be honest uh, in my uh, finals predictions on my channel if you want to see the full video go on my channel um, I, I predicted Brisbane to make the grand final pre-season I predicted Brisbane to beat Collingwood in the grand final so <laughs> I'm looking real good right now <laughs> well they were one step away from the grand final last year and the, the side they lost to was Geelong they mm. were pretty much in that game for two and a half three quarters and then Geelong just ran away with it but uh, Geelong are, would have a much older average age I would yeah, believe definitely. so um, yeah. yeah Brisbane have come leaps and bounds I believe and Janet, Joe Danaher he's just like a, a better Eric Hipwood isn't he <laughs> like obviously Eric Hipwood's a great player still young though Danaher is in his prime at the moment so it's just like a bit of an upgrade up forward mm. and I think their forward line clicks better without Hipwood in there at the moment you've seen McStay contribute multiple goals Danaher has been kicking bags uh Charlie Cameron's been getting off the chain a bit as well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, McCarthy's always going to pop up for goals as well. Zach right. Bailey's also a player that wasn't mm. the player he is now last year. Yeah. Um, and in addition to adding Joe Danaher, uh, Zach Bailey's incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unreal. Tore us apart on the weekend. But uh, yeah, I think it's fair to say Brisbane are currently second most likely to win the yeah. flag. And I think the other factor that's relevant for them is I don't think they're a strong MCG side. And mm. this final series, there's oh, it's unlikely there's going to be an MCG yeah. grand final. That is still possible. Uh, but I think we've kind of given up hope on that. Um, but that'll be one to watch. Yeah. We'll get into our final team of this ranking. Number one, we're going to go with Melbourne. And how could you go with anyone else when they win the minor premiership in that dramatic fashion? On top of that, their record is the best out of any top eight team against the top eight, winning eight games and dropping two. Unreal. They had a weird habit of dropping games against you know lesser lights this year. And I think that's going to hold them in good stead for these yeah. finals where their record against the other teams is good. Their last three were a win over the Eagles, uh, the Crows and the Cats. And uh, yeah, their star power is immense. You've got Gorn, all Australian Ruckman, Petrarca and Oliver, arguably in the top couple of handful of players in the league. Uh, the defense is settled with May and Lever and they've got forward line options with Fritch and um, 
uh, Cosby Brown. Pickett in addition to Ben Brown now He's settling. He's been playing really well. Exactly right. So um, they've kind of settled on a dynamic that I think they're happy with. And like I made the point about Geelong, Melbourne are one of those teams that just lift when they need to. Mm-hmm. And that's why I believe that they will win the flag. And I think they're Absolutely. the best team in the competition. Uh, how relevant is it that you think the mental edge of beating Geelong in the final round? Yeah, no, that's huge. I think you put it perfectly there. What did you just say? <laughs> no. Yeah, when when the, the kitchen gets hot, Melbourne's sent right in there because they're, they're demons and they like it in mm. fire. Um, I think uh, a lot of the credit goes to May and Lever because they're the big names, but uh, Petty and Jordan down back as well, they've been massive for them. Harrison um, Petty's a really good guy. Yeah, I think, were they both in the best 22 under 22 like, squad? The squad, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, well, Jordan was a midfielder. Yeah, okay. Yeah. He does play like half back though, right? Yeah, like I a defensive he, midfielder role. I think he moved that way, yeah. Very underrated, I think. Um, I've been on the D's train all season long. Cozzy Pickett <laughs> has been running through the midfield and popping up for goals as well. Petrarca, he's such a soft bloke. Like, in, in that um, interview... He's just he's like very well spoken, very softly spoken, but that does not reflect his game style at all. Yeah. He's just such a hard, he's hard a boy. Yeah, very very thick, and yeah, Ben Brown has um, started to click in his side as well, which is very good to see. Uh, yeah, th- they are the flag favourites for me. Mm. I you know I know you don't like this point I made on just the tips, but I think there could be a potential downside with um, the the dramatic nature of their. F- final round win they lift still they I, lift they always lift I don't think it'll cost them the flag because I still think they um, they will win the flag but um, just sometimes when a team wins like that it's like they've won the premiership and they struggle to lift the next week mm. I'm not saying it will happen but it's just something to watch um, but I think Melbourne is the team to beat I think that's something to agree on but that is our power rankings for the final series guys let us know what you thought what you would do differently I'm sure there will be a little bit of uh, issue I think some people might take exception to the fact that we've still got Sydney below the Bulldogs yeah. uh, and perhaps maybe Geelong a bit too low I, I don't know but let us know in the comments get your comments down below 1 to 8 power rankings please I want to see them I'll be reading them uh, do go check out the Drew Footy Show on Drewzy channel uh, just the tips where we do our round uh, predictions and we'll be doing that throughout the final series and we'll both be live streaming this weekend so hope to join you this weekend for an exciting round of footy guys thank you and we'll see you soon bye